The Great Train Robbery from 1903, directed by Edwin S. Porter, is the first narrative film ever made. It took different shots and edited them together and created a narrative sequence. <laughs> However, it was not the first film to do this, as this film was heavily inspired by a daring daylight burglary, also from 1903, but from across the Atlantic Ocean, here in sunny England, specifically in Sheffield. The film is directed by Frank Mottishaw, and you can really see pretty much the same techniques being used here, including sequencing the narrative together and using cross-cutting to build up tension. So this is the first narrative film, right? <laughs> well, no, because this film is actually heavily inspired by one of Edwin S. Porter's films, The Life of an American Fireman, which also set up a lot of the narrative techniques that were then developed in The Daring Daylight Burglary, and then put to great effect in The Great Train Robbery. This film is basically an early remake. It takes the narrative and the techniques of the British film Fire from 1901, which is often credited as the first film to use cross-cutting to actually build up suspense. So, is Fire the first narrative film? Well, actually, even earlier than like that, earlier the British drama series Attack on the China China from France. Shut up! <sighs> okay, let's stop. So what can we learn here? Basically, in early cinema, it's very difficult to pinpoint what exactly was a first. We can basically pinpoint what was the first moving picture, even though this in itself is contested. But when we get to aspects like narrative films, it becomes a lot more complicated because the technology at this point in the late 1890s has spread so far, and there's so much money being thrown around by different investors and entrepreneurs trying to create a new art form all at the same time, all taking inspiration from each other, and innovating and experimenting with this new art form means that it could be set apart as unique and enticing and, you know, exciting for your average audience. So while it's very difficult to pinpoint the first narrative film, it's still a very fun exercise to do yourself. The reason for that is because there's so many resources and so many places that you can watch very early examples of film. Watching them is basically like watching early YouTube videos. A lot of them are very quaint, very simple, but fun. And they're also very short. I hope this has been slightly informative. See you soon. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this Blumenfeld Film Talk history lesson about film. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope to see you soon. Have a nice day.